And I'm not afraid to say it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You are tuned in to Black Westchester Presents, the People Before Politics radio show, every Sunday night, 6 to 8, on InTheMixRadio.com. I'm A.J. Woodson, along with your host, Black by Popular Demand, Damon K. Jones. Then we have our co-host, the lovely Lorraine Lopez, hey. and Dr. Robert Baskerville, Ph.D. Come on, man, stop that. You know you're supposed to call me Brooklyn Bob and everything. Okay, from the... <laughs> he's, like, he's, like, he's like, that doctor title is BS. <laughs> Brooklyn Bob. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. So we come in the... We're coming to the end of January, about to get into Black History Month. A um, couple of things happening in February. We got the Rappacon. Um, documentary screening has been moved from the high school to the... Oh. That wasn't me. Uh, that wasn't me. Okay. It was, it, it, okay, because I'm sitting here like... This time it wasn't me. <laughs> we got the Rappacon documentary screening, which was supposed to take place at the high school will now take place at Mount Vernon High I mean uh Mount Vernon Public Library on um February yeah, Saturday. Yeah, I, you know what? February third. Huh? I was wondering about that, but Okay, okay. Maybe it's none of my business. I think that um <laughs> the Facebook Live just kicked in because somebody just liked it. There you go. Yeah. Yes, yes. We are now what's up? My cousin from Atlanta, David Moffitt. So what's up, cuz? What's good? What's good with you? Yeah, so we have the documentary. It's gonna be two screenings, a twelve o'clock showing a three o'clock showing, and after the three o'clock showing, um, Black Westchester will be hosting um, a panel discussion Q and A, um, which I will be moderating. And again, I spoke. Um, this is the documentary of the last Rapacon event that took place, which I was on one of the panels, and the panel I was on is going to be part of the documentary. So, I guess there'll be a two second scene of me in there somewhere. So. That's a cool thing. That's a cool thing. That's a very cool thing. Definitely. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, I'm really looking forward to our black history issue coming out. It will not be your mom and pops or your grandmother's black history issue. It will not be telling you Absolutely about how not. Harriet Tubman freed the slaves and Martin Luther King had a dream. We will not be talking about any of that. We've done so many other things and since then. And, and other than that, and there's a lot of local Westchester black history that I think a lot of people don't know, yeah. um, uh, that I dug. Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to say I, I had the privilege of previewing a couple of articles, and I have to say, um, you know, some fine writing and analysis. I know your piece on um, Pam Greer yes. is, is not to be Wonderful. missed. Very well written, um, exceptionally. And also Damon's piece on the importance of labor unions and the need to resist the right to work um, rules. As a matter of fact, I was reminded of that today, D, because just before I got here, mm -hmm. I saw on my news feed a report that the Supreme Court is going to be taking up on its docket that, this that year. Janus, that Janice yeah. case. Yeah. Which so. will, if if it, if that Janice case goes through, it will decimate unions. Right. No matter police unions, labor unions, I mean, they're, they're going to have to really... What's the well, it may force what, our what police unions to well, finally take a more progressive stance. No, well, they can't, <laughs> I mean, because they won't have any money. The Janus case is that when you get, um, especially in the public sector, when you get a job and it's a union job, mm -hmm. they automatically take money out your paycheck. Yeah. Right? For you dues, have no, right. you have even union no. Union dues, yeah. Right. Now you can decide if they can. Yeah, they give you the employee, employee the right. So you can say, hey, listen, I'm going to keep my $1,000 a year that I pay union dues, but the union still has to protect you. The union... Even though you don't pay dues, the union still has to fight for your right. And do it. The law will break unions because there won't be no money coming into unions. So now right. I think the way that, I, but member? I think the yes. way that oh well, nobody's gonna pay. The way the <laughs> union <laughs> rules are written now, anyone who is in a workplace that's covered by a collective bargaining agreement, your union dues are automatically deducted. Right. And if you want to <clears throat> don't want to contribute, then you yeah. have to inform the union. Right. But now they no 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 you automatically you pay. Do, no you can't not say I'm not paying union dues that does not work that way today mm -hmm. right especially in the in the in the public sector I it's can't I can't wake up. up tomorrow 
and, and, and call the Westchester County Corrections Benevolent Association and say, I'm not paying union dues. They said, oh, well, it's still coming out, whether you like it or not. There's nothing you could do about that. This Janice case right now is going to give myself and every other union member that's in the public sector the option to say, hey, listen, we don't, we, we don't, we don't want our union dues coming out anymore. That's now, do you think that's a that, good what, thing or a bad thing? It's a bad, a bad thing. thing. It's going to break unions because without no, the opinion, w- without the dues money, the union can't operate. I mean, it's it's without the, the money coming in from the members, the unions can't operate. And what they're doing now, even with with the tax, with with the new uh, flawed tax laws, you can't even deduct your union dues from your taxes anymore. Oh, so wow. so so if this Janice case kick in, the average person is going to say. No, I want my money back. Of course. So, 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 and that's not just that's nationwide. It's going to be nationwide. Wow. Because it's going to the Supreme Court is going to rule on it. There was a case before that, um, but it never got heard because the Scalia passed. And I don't know what happened in that case. It was a case before that that was supposed to get to the Supreme Court, but something happened. And when, when Anthony Scalia died, right it, when they didn't it, have him, right. I think they had to. Uh, I guess they, they tabled, tabled it. I don't know what they did with it, but this Janice case is right on time. I mean, you understand? So we, so everybody, everybody, everybody is watching this Janice case. That's but going at the Supreme Court. That's going to the Supreme Court. Yeah. Uh-huh. But at the end of the day, you know what? If it happens, I, I blame the union. I blame a lot of these union presidents that are kissing ass to elected officials. You know, I blame these union presidents that are not speaking out on, on, on labor issues and representing their members the way they're supposed to, you know. So now you have to figure out a way that you're going to keep your membership. You have to figure out a way that, that, that you're going you're gonna to actually survive, you know, once this Janice case comes. Because you're going to have a lot of people, especially, especially the people that's close to leaving, Right. Especially mm. the people that's close to retiring. Hey, what yeah. the fuck I'm going to spend union dues for? I can retire next year. Right. They don't need me. I might as well keep my union dues. You know, they ain't do nothing for me anyway. Right, right, right. You know, especially my union. Shit, the way they fucked up the senior officers. We're going to tell them to kiss our fucking ass. I want my 300 and something, $400 back. Because you ain't do shit for me anyway. If I'm going to get a raise, I'll get a raise out the union dues. <laughs> on, on, the check-in, on the check-in for the first time. <coughs> On the first time, Who that? Sam Zer- Sam Sam Zerka is oh. on the check in. Oh, Sammy Z. For the oh. first time, I've Sammy never seen, Z. First Sammy time I've Z. Seen what's that. up, man? It's, it's it's good to see you doing your thing. We gotta get you on the show, Sammy. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> we gotta we gotta yeah, no man. We gotta <laughs> absolutely. Get you. So, yeah, Sammy, man. I'm gonna hit you on Messenger, man. I'm gonna send you my number, man. You gotta text me. We gotta get you on the show, Sammy. I'm I'm hope you're listening. We gotta definitely get you on the show. Um, you know, because you got a story to tell, brother. You Absol- got a story absolutely. to tell. And um and you set you set the standard for Black Westchester. Absolutely. With with with, with, with your paper, brother. You you definitely set the, the standard. The with Westchester the Guardian. 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 The yes. Westchester Guardian. Big we gotta give him a round of applause. Sammy Zerka, Westchester Guardian, man. You set the standard, you know, for holding uh elected officials accountable. Um, in a new yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That's, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Sam, we've never had the pleasure to meet of meeting, but your reputation precedes you. <laughs> <laughs> also on the check in we got Jonathan Newton, um, Pat English from Long Island, uh G Supreme, um uh Chris Breezy, um Ed Reyes, and uh there's a couple other names I didn't see. Um Craig Jackson, Michael Bullock. Um, and I said my cousin David from Atlanta. Um, also on the check in. Um, and Omi Medina just checked in. Oh, Omi, Omi. Monique, Omi Monique, can't, can't Monique hear, James. So I gotta send them my love. Monique James just checked in. Monique, what's uh, up? Uh, what's Name's up, Monique? Seven. What's good? What's good? Hi, Monique. Yes, yes, She's yes. She's in Santo Domingo, no? Uh huh. Monique. I, is she? Yeah. Well, I don't Lucky know. her. I, I, I see right. she wants to stay in form. <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> Not that's to be right. missed, no matter what you're up to. Yeah, it's nothing like watching people before politics on the beach with a margarita and Santa Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> Omi just said what's good to you. Omi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Omi said if I didn't say hi to him, let me wave. Hi, Omi, mm-hmm. that I was not allowed at his funeral. And Monique just said my favorite show, so she's listening from mm-hmm. wherever she's at. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. great. Yeah, that's yeah, great. Yeah. That's great. We appreciate the support. Yeah, yeah, we appreciate yeah. the support. Yeah, she's in DR. Yes, yes, yes. 
So as I was saying, Black Westchester, we 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 uh, we're really proud of this issue coming out. Um, and actually, um, anybody want to advertise? You have forty eight hours. Please advertise. Forty eight hours. Um, Tuesday. Wait. Well, yeah, Wednesday morning. You got till Wednesday morning to have artwork and payment in. Uh, we got like about two two slots left, two three slots left. So jump on it if you want to advertise. Um, oh, Marilyn is laughing. Let me tell you something. We talk about supporting black businesses. Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, we are we are a black owned business. You know, we we represent the issues of of black people throughout Westchester. You know, and everybody. You know, people say, well, nobody supports black businesses, but it goes both ways. You know. Support us, we support you. I mean, this is how it works. You know, advertisement is, is, is part of how we are able to bring the paper to to the people for to free. To the people for free. You know, for free. We we don't charge you for the paper, but advertisement. Except for uh, subscriptions. You can get your subscription mailed to your house for twenty five dollars a year. Right. So what what we're saying is if you have a business or you just wanna just advertise you know, take an ad out in Black Westchester Magazine. I mean, we're all over Westchester County. You went in every black church in Westchester County. All the major ones, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, major and minor. Right. And I, I so, want to say that one of the most important critiques, historical critiques that have been offered up of black leadership in the past 50 years, 75 years, is the decline of black institutions as a result of integrationism. And um, I think that critique is spot on. But that also means that all members of the community have an obligation, if you think we need are in need of independent institutions, to at very least consider um, supporting Black Westchester and actually, you know, do that. Um, we're not going to have uh, newspapers that represent our interests from our point of view, if you will, um, if we yeah, don't have some way of we're losing We're finance. losing black, black uh, press altogether, black, you know, TV news, black talk radio mm -hmm. is almost a thing of the past. And uh, Damon Jones is getting a lot of love. Zam Zerka said, Damon Jones, keep doing what you're doing. I love it. Mm -hmm. um, Timothy John Fielder said, Damon Jones, my hero. Um, Craig Jackson said, Damon Jones, love and support to you and all of the black Westchester's movers and makers in the county of Westchester, oh, making the county of Westchester better for all of the people who do not have a voice. The people's choice, and that's my friend Damon K. Jones. Thank you, thank you, brothers. Thank you, thank you. Shout out to um, Omar Cole just tuned in, and Ken Bright just tuned in. Brother Bright, Brother what's up? Bright. What's up, Ken? And let's not since we're talking black, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Can't Absolutely. forget, in, in two weeks, it's the first Westchester's first black political conference. Absolutely. This is his first. We're making history. And not only that, we're going to have history attending. Absolutely. I know. I saw Do that. Dr. Lenora Fulani yes. will be attending. The first woman. Give a, give a hand, man. Yeah. Give, give, give a hand. I'll wait for you to finish. Yeah, man. <laughs> the first woman, the first black woman to be on the presidential ballot in all 50 States. Well, no, first woman and first African American. First that, woman, period. Yeah, I see and that. first African American. Yeah, yeah. yeah, see, a lot of people, not you know, just black woman, first right. woman. Yeah, a lot of a, a lot of oh, people, wow. a, a lot of people say Shirley Chisholm was the first woman to run for president and to be on a, um, a major party, the Democratic right. Party. But she only she wasn't on she ballots wasn't in twelve on, states. Right, she was only on the ballots in oh. twelve states. Right, Fulani was on the ballots in every. State in, in all America, fifty states. In all fifty states. And not only that, I just in, in my doing my Black History piece on her, she received more votes than any female for president up until two thousand twelve. Jill Stein. When Jill Stein of the Green Party That's before right. up into from eighty eight to two thousand twelve, she right. had received more votes for president than any woman. Period. And I, and I also just want to add that the vehicle for Dr. Fulani's historic run was an independent party, if I'm not mistaken. Absolutely. It Absolutely. Was. Absolutely. And, and Absolutely. so it provides well, really? an example. Well, well, it gave birth to the, in the, it was the, it was something else, mm -hmm. but that was the beginning of what we call today as the as the independent party. I forgot, okay. yeah, I forgot I, what they call it. I, you can read about it all it next month. You can read about it all next month. You can read about it all next month. Don't, 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 don't steal all your thunder. Right, right. Um, AJ, are you sending out Michelle? subscriptions? 
Yes, yes. Because so, somebody so, asked me how they can get one yesterday. Um, subscriptions. Uh, what's the um? How much in, in the email? Please? It's twenty five dollars a year for twelve issues. Call nine one four nine seven nine two zero nine three or email blackwestchester at gmail dot com. Um, I'll send you the link where you can pay. Give us your, your um, address and everything, and the first one, the first month will go out, and you will receive twelve, and it will be mailed to you. Um, to your house or your business or wherever you want it mailed to. Uh, it was it was the um, it was the new alliance party. New alliance party. But yeah. under Fulani, even recently, mm. with um, with Bloomberg, because of Fulani, mm. Bloomberg's last election, the most votes of color ever. See, people don't even talk about how many people. With Polanyi's lead, put Bloomberg in office, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, so the black vote do matter, but we have to have we have to create a vehicle to make it matter. Absolutely, you know, and that's and and that's what and that's what the Westchester Black Political Caucus is all about. Damon, we need bro more brothers like you to help change the narrative. Hashtag Black Press, hashtag Black Media from Bobby Blue. Thank and, you, Bobby. Um, um, G Supreme said, "I like what y'all are doing. I'm promoting, I'm promoting some positive music, something like that." Uh, <laughs> Rosie Rosie Martinez just uh, tuned in, and Kenneth, the Olympian rapper Clemente, just tuned in. What's up, y'all? <laughs> <laughs> uh, anybody? Else? That's that's it to this point. But yeah, so you know, check out the the, the new issue. Um, we got a lot of good stories, like you said. Um, Bob spoke. We got the Pam Greer, the first black female to star in an action film, and this is back in the time when women roles were not. You know, women weren't getting a lot of good roles back then. They weren't getting leading roles. She was. She she had a bunch of leading roles, and um, kind of um, I don't know if hers was the first, but she was one of the first movies in what they call the black exploitation era. Um, she's definitely considered the queen of that genre, um, but um, so we have Clyde D. Hodges Jr. said good evening to all. What's good up, Clyde? Um, Clyde? Bunch of other stuff. A uh, bunch of other first people. You know, Westchester legends. People that you don't know. People you might not have known were from Westchester. But it's definitely a good reading, um, and I hope everybody is entertained and educated. And again, like I said, um, you got to Wednesday morning. <clears throat> to fill one of those last few spots, if you want to have a task, go ahead. No, I wasn't. Oh. I was just saying. Thank you. And 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 also, Doctor Bob is also going to be at, at at the conference, right? Oh, that's right. Doctor well, Bob is know. on the, the panel. One of the panels. He's on. He's, he's a panelist. Panel. Well, which one you on? Oh, com which way? <laughs> you, oh, community <laughs> organ. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, he don't even know. You don't even look at the flyer. Yeah, Your I'm face sorry. is on the flyer. You don't even look at the flyer. I, 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 no, I did see it. I've been, I've been overwhelmed finishing. Yeah, the no, he's session. doing the community. I, be, I believe the community organizing around um, understanding the political process. Oh, that was my first job, community organizing. Okay, I have to get myself ready for that. Well, you didn't have to <laughs> so, so, um, so while we're talking, so. The panelists include Minister Dr. Abdul Hafiz Muhammad, mm -hmm. um, student minister at uh, Moss Number no. Seven in, in Harlem. Um, Lena Anderson, president of the White Plains Greenberg NAACP. Dr. Robert Baskerville, Yay. that guy over there. Um, J How do you pronounce the name? Jamani. Jamani, Jamani Williams, uh, New York City, City Council uh, Councilman, who will be running for Deputy Governor of, of New York State. All right, all right, all right. Okay. With um, Mount no, you could run alone. Oh, you really? Mount yeah, Deputy uh -huh. yeah, Governor. Yeah. Mount Vernon Councilman Andre Wallace, uh, Doctor David Holder, New Rochelle Councilman uh, Jared Rice, and Minister Jazz. These are some of the panelists. The, it takes place February 10th, 2018. The Westpac office, 77 Tarrytown Road in White Plains. Um, and the, there's a Facebook page to register, right? There's a No, it, um, go to uh, Eventbrite and just do the search, Westchester um, Black Political Caucus. 
Okay. There's there's one for regular RSVPs and there's one for students. Okay. And is there any fee of? Uh, it's twenty five dollars regular RSVP. Students are free. Okay. There you go. Now this is something. Eventbrite. Yeah. This is something that. What's the website? Eventbrite. Eventbrite. The website is Eventbrite. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was, like, what's the website? What's the website? Eventbrite. What a website. So, so <laughs> Eventbrite. Yeah. You don't have to do. <laughs> you don't go to the Westchester. The the, the address that's on the flyer. What's West, on the flyer? WestchesterBPC.org/events. Yeah, you could go on that. It's gonna send you to Eventbrite. Okay. Well, but, yeah, you know, for, I'm just, for, for, <laughs> people, for people that don't, you know, just go to Eventbrite and put the search in Westchester Black Political Conference, and it comes up. Okay. I mean, we trying to make it simple. Put it where the goats can get it. <laughs> no doubt, no <laughs> doubt, no doubt. So this is definitely, I mean, you support black media, but this is the first of, and we need to all show out and show up. And um, you don't have to be black. No, right? you don't have to be black, and there probably might be more white people than black people there. Because I'm giving a lot of great response from white people. Not that I care. You know, it is what it is. As long as people get the message that, you know, we need to change the community of color, but um, but those like of the color o- right the need only, to be there. Yeah, yeah. None of the black elected officials RSVP, but well, Legislator Parker did. And big shout out okay. to Legislator Parker. They'll right. show oh, up. Okay. They show up right. though. Yeah, well, yeah, they probably show up. But at least she RSVP. At least she responded to the email. I give her credit for that. <laughs> no <laughs> doubt. No <laughs> doubt. No doubt. Big shout out to Legislator Parker. No doubt. Kevin Bunch said, hey, Black Westchester listening and supporting the cause. Keep up the great work. Tyrone Hayden uh, just tuned in. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Everybody else. So, yo, um, we, um, we're going to have a um, – we got some guests coming. Um, of our, uh, one of our regulars, Tasha Young, will be here. And um, not too long ago, they had a, a, a protest and a press conference in front of Senator Klein's office um, with some of the Me Too organization. And yeah, man, there's a there's a there's a deep fly going around. Let me see if I can find. It. Keep oh, going. and um, they're supposed to show up, and they're going to explain the reason they had their press conference. With that, you know, what, and they what were out what, there, yeah, yeah, what they, what the reason for why they, why they taking the stance they taking, and um, speak on some other issues that um, um, affect them. So they, they uh, they should be here within the within the next few minutes, and we're going to be talking about that. Um, Wait, let's post the flyer. We can uh, post the flyer. Oh, I just sent it to you. Okay. Um, oh, now it says I can't send it. Okay, What's I was going to say on, I ain't see it yet. <laughs> Yeah, so so um, we're probably gonna have a lot of discussion, and again, in the beginning, we're not gonna be taking any calls. But it'd be easy if you want, if you have a comment or something, just leave it in the Facebook comment section, and I will definitely read it. And if you have a question, I'll make sure your question get answered, because um, we're not when we have shows like this, we we get a lot of calls, and we don't get a chance. You got two hours, you don't get a chance to actually talk to and and last week when we had the students here oh my god the phone um, off the hook you know you have four or five students here and you have parents six. calling who's six and you have parents calling whose kids wasn't even here now you got to figure if i if i let 10 12 parents talk for 2 minutes you know what i'm saying that's that's right. 20 30 minutes that we we would have lost of the kids actually you know talking to them so i i i made a a unilateral um, executive decision not to do the calls. Um, some were upset with me, but um, you know it was it was more important to hear the kids sing and 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 have the kids talk. And this was the flyer that they were talking about um, that's been going around. Um, <laughs> strong message there. Uh, wow, I don't care about women's rights. Okay. Yeah, IDC. I don't, I don't care. care. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. IDC 2008, 2018. Hashtag I don't care. Wow. Um, yeah, we haven't had Jeff Klein on the show, have we? Uh, I don't yeah. think he was coming on after that flyer. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think that's not. I think that that well, just deaded it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we invite the the the, the um, senator to come on, and if he wants to, you know, share his side of the story after this show, he's more than welcome to. Um, 
No, and that, we'll and reach out to him. We, yeah, we will definitely reach out to him. Yeah, we, mean, we, we will reach out to him on that. You need uh, Andrea back, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, yes, We're going yes, um, we to do. Oh, we yeah. Can, you got to get her to come to the conference. Yeah, too. I went to the... Um, Oh yeah, which yeah, next year where you uh, been? Oh I man, flyers listen, man, all look, over the place. look, look, man, been Saw around the Bota. world. I, yai, 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 Let me tell you. Let me tell you. So you know, let me tell you. I go to uh, the inauguration gala of George Lattimore. Big right. shout out to George Lattimore. Big shout, big shout, out. Big shout out. out. Very nice, very nice event, man. Very nice, very nice. And um, it was great. You know, had had a great had had a great time. I had a great me me and Councilman Waller. You know, we, we we just had a great time, and um, George gave Councilman Wallace was so fly. Let me tell you how fly it was that County Exec George Lattimore made him stand up again and let everybody look at his outfit. Aww, <laughs> that's so cute. You know, told told people this is what a, a well dressed man, man looks like. Looks like. Mm. You know, this this is how you. This is how you re- this is how you represent, and that, and that was great. Then, nice. um, last night, um, hanging out with Councilman Wallace again, we go down to the uh, NIPAN, NIPAN, the New York uh, State um, Progressive Action Committee fundraiser, mm-hmm. and Nina Turner was was um, Nina Turner was the keynote speaker. Um, yeah, there it is. There it is. I, look! Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not. Yeah. I just was watching yeah. Nina this earlier this afternoon. That was one of my. That was one of my bucket lists. Mm-hmm. You know, to so get, to get, to a, get picture? a picture with the legendary Nina Turner. So, so that that's that's I marked that all. Marked. Got got that done. You know, got that done. But you know, as always, those who know uh, Nina Turner. Oh, that's me and Councilman Wild. Yes, yes. <laughs> that's me and Kyle. I, I Look, saw your and, influence and, rubbing and, off yeah, on you. Yeah, but your outfit with is dope. And the bow tie was velvet. That's that's nice. But you know what? But before, <laughs> but, but before, I mean, he, before, he, he, he before, before, before you go further, I, yo, Damon was used to be the only one out there in bow ties. Now I'm starting to see because of Damon a resurgence of bow ties, and not even that a resurgence of Michael Lamont bow ties. Well, Michael, Michael there's Lamont. never there's never been a uh, there's never been a drop off in Michael Lamont. But I'm saying we starting to see more everywhere. You ain't the only one wearing well, no more. Well, yeah, I mean there's a lot of people that wear Michael Lamont joints. You know, I I ran it, and you know what's crazy, it, what 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 was crazy about that? You know, we the, me and the brother, because I've been to other events. You know, when we when we spoke at the church that time, you know, and, and the ba- and the guy that was ba- was the basketball player, um, he had a Michael Lamont. Right, 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 right. He had right, a Michael right. Lamont. Tiny Archibald. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. it wasn't Tiny. It was the other one. There was two that was on the panel. Okay, I don't remember. What the, the one suit. that was in the suit. Well, the second that, that, one that still worked for the NBA. Oh, it was okay. Tiny Archibald, then it was another. It was another speaker. Well, uh, anyway, and and. and, and Actually, there was three. Lowe's Moore was there, too. So there oh, was, yeah, Lowe's Moore. Yeah, yeah, no, was that, was, was Lowe's that the was first the one or the second one? We did two there, right? Oh, but he was on the... S- no, I don't Because I moderated the second one. The first one, right. I was on the panel. The right. One the I one that we was on the panel, Okay. it was a brother there. He had the Michael Lamont on. Um, but what was key with, with that, you know, you run into people, Michael Lamont's ties are, are, are very unique. So you know... You know, is a Michael Lamont tie. So you say, hey, man, Michael Lamont? He's like, yeah, it's like a family. <laughs> you know, Michael Lamont is like a family because that, that's the way, you know, that's the way it is. It's just like a family. When, when people that constantly buy Michael Lamont, it's, it's like you're, 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 you're in a family, you know. And uh, once a year he has an event where everybody from across the nation comes. He has a black tie event. And everybody from all his customers from around the nation come. And we have a great we have a great night. It's all black tie, man. All everybody's classied up, and everybody got Michael Lamont ties on. Nice. And he and he hosts the event. It's, it's very good. Anyway, so this brother here, what was you really unique about the brother? Talking to the brother, then he says, "Man, you look familiar. You look so familiar." So I'm like, "Hey, man, you know." I'm in it. Right. No, <laughs> Clive D. Know. Hodges said, "Listen, Damon turned me on to it. <laughs> the, bow, the bow tie." Look is classy. It is classy. Shout out to Uncle Frank, Max Maxwell, Glenn Uncle Butler, Frank. Stephanie Benton, Nicole Ann Tarkenton said, My God, Damon. Nadine Hunt Robinson said, Greetings from White Plains. And Nadine, you are in our Black History issue. 
the first black um, African American to be on the uh, White Plains Common Council. Mm. You are living in, history. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. So what was unique is that the brother remembered me from the Man of the Year Award. He's a retired detective. So he was at the function. He was at the function when I got my award for the Man of the Year from NYPD. Oh, wow. So mm. that was crazy because he was like, yo, you look so familiar, you look so familiar. I'm trying to remember where I knew you from. And that by the end of the thing, he was like, you was man in the year, right? <laughs> and, I was, and I was like, yeah. He said, I was at the event. Uh, we start talking again. So, you know, it's, it's good. You know, it's, it's really it's really good. And, and, and the ties are so nice that they're always a, a conversation breaker. It's a conversational piece. You know, plus they're classy. You well, that's what he said. The, the bow tie look is classy. That's yeah, what classy. classy. Yeah. No doubt, no doubt, I, no doubt. I did want to um, add um, that there is going to be a celebration at Mount Vernon's Democratic Party headquarters this week featuring. Oh, yeah. I did yeah. get a text message yeah. with yeah. that, too. Well, so, yeah, uh, I'm, I think I'm trying out. to send it to y'all. Yeah. yeah. No, Sarepa sent it to me. Okay, well, I forwarded yeah. it to both of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's what's Wednesday? that this Thursday? Is it? It's the 31st. That's what, What's that? Oh, it's, yes, it's Wednesday. Mm -hmm. My man, you are correct. And what is it? It's a thank you reception that's being hosted by the Mount Vernon Democratic Party, um, and it's going to feature um, our newly elected county executive, uh, George Latimer, mm -hmm. to express his thanks and gratitude for all the support that he got from, you know, folks in Mount Vernon. Um, undoubtedly, you know, everyone um, gets some of the credit, but Mount Vernon voters get their share as well. Absolutely. And I think it's important that he does come by and make an appearance. Um, so, you know, it's the time it's, it's, everyone it's, take a victory lap. They will actually be celebrating um, all of the 2017 election yes. winners. Yes. I'm the Honorable George Latimer, the Honorable Amongst Lyndon them. D. Williams, the Honorable George, I don't know, Westchester County Judge. George, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. He's the Westchester County Judge. Honorable Arlene Gordon Oliver, yeah. Honorable um, Deborah Reynolds, Honorable Janice Duarte, the Honorable... Yes. Delia Ferguson and Marcus Griffin. They will. It's Wednesday, um, January thirty first at seven o'clock. Nadine said, "Thank you for including me and continue to be the voice for Black Press." Thank you very much. Yeah, so that's definitely um, something we got to check out. We got to yeah. stop through. Go ahead. I, I one of our. Um Listeners reminded me of a, a local story that has relevance to the city of Mount Vernon, and that is the recent um, conviction of a Florida, a sitting Florida mayor. As a matter of fact, a fl sitting Florida Democratic mayor. Maybe that's a sign. Yeah, um, for for <laughs> receiving um, <laughs> bags, a McDonald's bag. <laughs> That wasn't full of Big Macs. Eight thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, eight thousand dollars. You know, and when I saw it, I I, I resisted the urge <laughs> to throw out some more subs. I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> I was getting ready to post it on Facebook, but it has obvious relevance. Yes. Um, to a lot of the things that's going on on Mount Vernon, and it's a reminder of the importance of local news outfits like Black Westchester, and also by extension, Low Hud. Um, both of which have given considerable coverage to allegations of wrongdoing in City Hall in Mount Vernon. Um, and, you know, I do not think that these are um, baseless um, claims of fake news. There's, there's substance there, as we all know. Um, even Westchester Guardian um, covered it as well, gave it extensive coverage um, for anyone who was interested in, you know, looking at um, some of the bigger details about what occurred during the, um, the um, election and then maybe the opening weeks of the Thomas administration. It is disturbing from my standpoint. All righty then. That's what's up. That's, that's, and that's the job of the, you know, <clears throat> I, w I was telling somebody, um, doing Black Westchester, being the editor of Black Westchester is not um, something that is going to make you very many friends, a lot of friends. It's not gonna, you're not always gonna be the most popular person um, you know, some people just not, it's funny, let's put it this way. So when Ernie Davis was in office and we were putting Ernie Davis feet to the fire, most Richard Thomas supporters could not champion our cause and celebrate us enough. But then when Richard Thomas got in office, oh, and all Ernie Davis supporters, they would have nothing to do with us. So once Richard Thomas got in office, 
and we started holding Richard Thomas feet to the fire. The Ernie Davis supporters love us now, and now Richard well, Thomas people can't can't, can't, can't can't stand us. Well, everybody that's listening, mm-hmm. I'm gonna have something to say, and when I say it, and when I say it, it's gonna be no holes barred. I'm gonna have something to say about the Thomas administration, about his punk ass brother Butch, about a lot of people. And when I say it, it's gonna be no holes barred. Ain't gonna say it now. Well, I was just gonna say, when you gonna say it? I'm not gonna say it now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna say it, cause it's always a time. It's, al- it's, al- well, it's, it's a time and a place It's everything. always a time and a place to say everything. It's punk ass brother Butch, no. Already no. You know, he already know. I ain't gotta say no more. He he already know. He he already know. But the rest, I'm gonna say it. I but I ain't gonna say it now. I'm gonna say it when it means something. Right now it's just gibberish and it be forgotten. You know, you gotta say it at the right time where 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 it affects the right things. Right now it ain't even worth it. Mm. It's not it's it, it's not even worth it. So one last thing um about Mount Vernon politics. Um so earlier this week, I believe it was Tuesday, the Thomas administration, the city of Mount Vernon, and um, Councilman Wallace's company, Creative Direction, went to court for what was supposed to be a, a, a settlement hearing. So there was a $320,000 judgment against the city, and I guess the judge, um, you know, gave him a little discount, said make it two seventy five. And um, the lawyers for the city, for the Thomas administration, said, "Okay, but we want Councilman Andre Wallace to pay us 183 thousand for damages." To which the judge found a little hysterical and um, said, "Hold up, you got a judgment for 320 against you, and you want that person to pay you 183? Okay, I see this is not going nowhere. Court date April 16th. So now on April 16th." Um, at um, at nine thirty, um, they will actually for the first time this full case will actually come to court, and why that's important is um, everybody gets subpoenaed. Well, not only that though, that we there's been a lot of things said from both sides, and a lot of people in the middle and the people they they just really don't know what's true and what's right. not true. Um, if you say anything against the administration, it's supposed to be fake news. The administration has, for a year and a half, told you Andre Wallace didn't pay prevailing wages, and the Department of Labor said found no wrongdoing in that. So it's just been this is the first opportunity where subpoenas will go out to everybody involved, and um, thank you. Subpoenas will go out to everybody involved, and um, the whole truth can actually come out because. A lot of the propaganda that's been going out, no matter what side you believe, you try that on court. In court, that's perjury, and that's right. a crime. So the truth might actually come out. And I understand subpoenas are going out or have gone out to several members of the Thomas administration, including the mayor himself, Mayor Richard Thomas, the honorary police commissioner, Joe Spezio, the corporation counsel, He's Lawrence not honorary. Perker, Stop. Okay. I'm well, not police. No, 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 deputy. No, 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 no. Let's the dishonorable? Okay. No, no, police, no, police commissioner. No, he's police. deputy. Deputy he police is, commissioner. He is sworn in as deputy police as commissioner. Deputy police commissioner. Okay, let me not give him his right honor, Not honorary. Okay. And and when we discuss that, and and like this is not the time and place, but I'm going to say it. When we discuss that, that brings him to a whole different level of the law. And I hope he understands that. And I hope everybody that's been taking orders. Y'all know who I'm talking about that's been taking orders from him. Understand what's going down. See, everybody think this shit is a game. They think it's a game. You know, but 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 when people when when those authorities finally come down, you you ain't you gonna see it's not a game. And you're gonna see the loyalty that he have for y'all when he turned on y'all. So when is that going to happen? Because I've been hearing that I for hope the last it happens. year well, and a half. Well, it can't happen. To, look, it's going to happen when it's going to happen. It's going to happen. My, I, well, at this point, look, it's going to happen when it's going to happen. The, 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 the feds want a home run. 
the feds do not come. They don't want – they only get, like, really one shot at things. So right. they, they want to make sure they have all their ducks in a row before they even come out. You, you know what I'm saying? Before they even show their hand. So they have a winning – you know what I'm saying? A winning strategy. They don't want to come. You do all of this, and you come all out, and then you lose. You know what I'm saying? That, that you know, they wait to the last minute. And that's what. But um, before I forget, the others that will be subpoenaed include the Corporation Counsel Lawrence Bakari, they still work um, with him. Maria Donovan, and several others. And um, uh, just follow BlackWestchester dot com, BlackWestchester newspaper. Another scumbag. And, um, and, and oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. For, for more <laughs> for more information on this developing story, and we will have all the information for you. We will be covering the case. The case will be um. Oh yeah, we're gonna be coming. Okay, we're gonna go live. Uh, and, and, yeah, and we're gonna like, go live I, right, I, I, right out the door. Right, I was right. checking my calendar earlier in the day. I don't understand, y'all. <laughs> right, right. I don't understand. And and, and 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 the most important thing, there's interest involved. So by the time this case starts, the city will owe Andre Wallace, Councilman Andre Wallace's company, Creative Direction, an additional five thousand dollars. But you know what though? I, I, so I just just to put dollars and cents. We, we for the got listeners. our guests here. We're gonna bring okay. our guests here, but it's not going to trial. It's not going because once all the subpoenas come out, and and and, and once yeah, all the subpoenas, come, they, let's no, make a deal. They're gonna make a deal because see, nobody wants to put themselves. Especially Joseph Spezio, he don't want to get put on a he don't he he doesn't want to get put on the stand because you get asked anything, anything that's pertaining, you can get asked anything, my, and he's going to answer something that's going to open up the door to something else that might open up the door to something else and might open up. The, he's not going to put his fat ass on the stand. It's not happening. So so they they're going to settle. They're going to settle, and and Mayor Thomas is not going to get up on the stand. He didn't lie his whole damn political career. It was a lie. I, it's a lie. I, it's still I, a lie. So I, how, how's I, I he going to get on the stand? Did. How's he going to get on the stand? How's he going to get on the stand? Those those bogus ass press releases that they sent down, trash. You, he's going to really going to talk about that? And, if it, and look, and that's a, go ahead. put it like this: if they do take it to trial, and they go, they're dumber than I thought. And right. that's a good segue talking about holding political uh, candidates' feet to the fire. The, these ladies that oh, are coming yeah, come in next. In. These ladies that are coming in. Come on, Tasha, come these, on in. These ladies that are coming in now held um, are holding Senator Klein's feet to the fire. Oh, they holding Senator Klein. See this accountability, y'all. That's what it's all about. Look okay. at how lovely Tasha looks. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, they out there. She got her Sunday. She got her Sunday church lady hat let, on. Let me tell you something. When women out there fighting the power, man, they 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 just get dressed up. Right. They get dressed up and they do the thing. She got her. She got. She got. She got her Sunday church hat yeah, on. That's it. That's you know, it. Her first lady hat. Oh, you got it. You get the wave like that. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everyone. So everybody knows you, but introduce yourself and your guests. Yes. So um, good evening, everybody. My name is Tasha De Young. Go. I am representing the New York Progressive Action Network, which is a statewide. Um, uh, network of local chapters. So our local chapter is called Love Pan, and we are in Senator Jeff Klein's district, some some of us who live in Pelham, and that's why we're here tonight to discuss our relationship with Senator Jeff Klein. Mm -hmm. And introducing us. She's gonna she introduce. She was, gonna, she was getting ready to introduce herself. Well, <laughs> okay. uh, my name is Amelis Lopez, and I'm uh, Lopez. Uh, Lopez in the house. Bronx yeah. is in the house tonight. Um, so my name is Jamelis Lopez, and I am a member of Bronx Progressives, which is a local chapter, one of the local chapters of the New York Progressive Action Network, which is a statewide organization that came together after the presidential primary last year. We're mostly mm -hmm. Bernie supporters, but you know we've opened it up to everyone else. Um, and I'm here as a member of Bronx Progressives, and we organized a press conference recently in front of his office in front of Jeff Klein's office to raise awareness about the investigation and the need for an investigation because at the time he was trying to prevent it from happening. And our mm. position was saying, hey, uh, if he's going to be given the benefit of the doubt, the young lady that came forward also needs to be given the benefit of the doubt. Now, so now basically we've been you know, fighting to raise awareness on this particular issue. Now, now let's back up because unfortunately we have a lot of people mm -hmm. who may not pay attention to the news. Mm -hmm. What, right. why, what, he was accused of something. What was, what, what was that whole, what happened? Yes. 
Well, um, so first of all, Senator oh, Jeff. Wait a minute. I got, I got you. You ain't gotta put that. Oh, th- yeah, because I have a personal fan <laughs> for when I get hot. She's preparing. Um, yes. We do certain they, they, things at a certain time age. Time out. David was just looking for a reason to put the fan on. This say, is an he, every week he, thing. As soon as he saw that fan, he jumped he was, so quick. He was going to turn the fan on anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so you just bailed him out. Yeah, you just bailed him out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you see how little you, that fan is that you got in. Yeah, <laughs> our former co-host yeah, Cynthia, she would have her fur coat on now. She's sitting that, and she'd be freezing. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. So, um, so Senator Jeff Klein represents um, sections of the Bronx and a little sliver of Westchester County um, in the town of Pelham. And not um, Mount Vernon, no part of Mount Vernon. I think maybe a little, a little bit. Yeah. Like a block like and a half? A little yeah. bit. Yeah. It's like the way they district it, the so area yeah. is, is like, um, it's you crazy. Know, it, it's crazy, but it's also like, you know, all kind of like certain sections of a certain demographic. Let's just put it that way. Mm-hmm. So that's where he's at. Um, and um, he is the, a, he's, he has done a power grab for leadership within the New York State Senate by um, starting a Democratic faction um, called the Independent Democratic Caucus. So they are Democrats. They run as Democrats. We support them as Democrats. And we send them to Albany to represent Democratic um, bills. Right. So when, when bills go to the Senate, we're thinking, oh, we have this many senators that would vote in favor because they represent us and we want Democrats, right? So he and eight other senators have decided that they will caucus with Republicans. They went rogue. Right. So he's the leader. And th- the reason that's relevant to um, people in Westchester County is because Andrea Stewart Cousins is supposed to be the leader in the Senate. She, she would have the majority if these eight senators would stay with the Dems. So you have Jeff Klein um, really keeping her from her leadership position. Wow. And that's an issue in and of itself, um, especially from for her constituency. We expect to have the majority. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Boo to him. You know, we expect to have the majority because we have the numbers. Right. Right. So when they do this, then <coughs> they then they usurp her power. But there's money attached to that because when you have the majority, they right. get more money. So, you know, I could talk on and off, but um, but this we came out um against him because of that first. Okay. I okay. just want to make that clear. Okay. And because we just came from a Me Too forum, and and I want to talk a little bit about that too, and how people sometimes attach themselves to the hot topic. Yes. But there is an accusation from one of his staffers who in 2015 she alleges that he forcibly kissed her okay right okay it's coming up now um he knew about it he did not go through any channels to um allow for an investigation um and the way things work up in albany you know everybody's kind of a friendly in certain ways so even on the ethics committee that would sit in um you know, an investigator or, or mm-hmm. scrutinize or, or look into this accusation, three of his IDC senators sit on that, too. No, oh, Jesus. Uh, oh, uh, really? Yep. Yes. That, that I didn't know. That's a conflict of interest. The, yeah. Well, yeah. Mm. Very lot, much so. A lot of that goes on in Westchester. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, this is Albany, bro. No. But from Westchester, though. But, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So, so, our, so our protest was really about calling an independent investigation mm-hmm. about what went on. Okay. Um, you know, because of what Tasha just said, you know, like three of his colleagues sit in that ethics committee. So uh, at the time, you know, the young lady came out. He had his own press conference because he anticipated that she was going to come out with the story. And he was basically, like, rallying support and saying, hey, you know, I like, I, like I'm innocent. And already in the media, like when it came out, she was being portrayed in a certain way, kind of like mm. she was being victim blame for coming out. And I feel like when anybody, man or woman, comes out with a story like that, you need to empower them to come forward and give them the support system that they need to you know, share their story and pursue any kind of investigation that's needed. 
so that the truth can come to light, right? Mm -hmm. So at the time, he was just trying to shut things down. And then our position was, no, an independent investigation needs to take place. So there was a press conference in front of his office on Williams Ridge Road. Yeah, I watched that live. <laughs> oh, on Brooks' yeah, yeah. 12th? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I watched or it live because Facebook Tasha, live. Oh, I, I yeah. think Tasha had uh, Facebook yeah. live. Yeah. Facebook oh, live. right. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you, you're aware of it. Yeah. And then there was also a uh, press conference earlier that day, uh, 12 p.m., mm -hmm. in front of City Hall. So, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of uh, oh, women okay. leaders from across the yeah. city and the No IDC movement. Um, you know, and leaders here in the Bronx, like like Tasha, other leaders of Progressive Women of Pelham. Yeah, you know, they came together and, and they took a stand. We took a stand, and we said in this era of Me Too, where you know women and, and men are coming out sharing their stories of being victimized, there's no space for anybody to shut the conversation down. It needs to move forward, and that was the position that we took when. We went to the press conference when for both of the press conferences. What was the end result of it, and and what was his response to the press conference? She's not telling the truth, you know, really trying to discredit her, mm -hmm. Aww. really. And he's, you know, he's he's you know he's a pretty powerful person, um, and um, but so is Nick Spano. He used to be. So See is uh, you know um, Al Franken. There you go. You know, and and there was even you know calls to ask Senator Gillibrand to ask him to step down. Um, and I think, you know, we haven't had... Ask who to step down? Jeff Klein. When? There was, like, a grassroots call and calls into her office. Oh, call to her office? Yeah. Oh, she didn't do it. No, she did not. Oh, no, yeah. I, I didn't I think don't she wanna, was. I want to go on record saying that, no, we are, that there was a grassroots request for her to do that because she did it to Frank and, right. and she can't do it. No, she and can't did do she? it. Did she? Is she going to... No, no response as yet. No, because because see, and I, didn't I, I told you, I told you, mm -hmm. that whole thing with Al Franken was bullshit. Mm -hmm. It was politically, it was a politically motivated call for him to step down because they wanted to set up more when he was running for senator. It had nothing to do with women's in rights, right? Right, if the dude in Al Al Alabama, because they just wanted to put more pressure on more. <clears throat> I hate when politicians do things for political reasons and not for the right thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And 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 when people got mad at me when I called it, I said I said Gillibrand is a phony. Mm. Because be, because she was just doing that for political reasons at the time and she sacrificed Al Franken's for 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 their own political goals against the Republicans. Now you have someone in, in our own town in in Westchester County in our own state yeah. and she's not saying anything. So, so that's and why, that, it, right? And she's not going to no, say anything. No. See, because Klein right. is one of the good old boys. Mm -hmm. Klein, and so is she. And thank you, because she didn't say anything about Bill Clinton. She should have turned his money down, <laughs> or his endorsement. Well, so, this so, is a hot show. Well, uh, no, because 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 see, and and I asked you, hey, Tasha. I said, what is Gillibrand doing? Not Remember the first thing it. I said? I said, what's Gillibrand doing? She said, I don't know. Let me see. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> because because I knew. See, see now when it's in your backyard, you get quiet. You know, you get quiet. She should be out front, telling Klein, telling Klein to step down, and she really about it, about it. So, so now you see that she, you know, we gonna see. Yeah. You know, we gonna see if the if the movement is for well, a lot of these women politicians, if this movement is for political reasons or they really believe in what they say. Mm -hmm. You know, and people, we can't, you know, we can't get fooled by false slogans. It means a lot, it does. but we can't allow the and, politicians and pink hats. to use it for their own political reasons. And you out there sacrificing, right. other women are out there sacrificing, right. and they get lost in the shuffle. Black people, we we've been doing. See, we we get that all the time. I see it all the time in the black community. Yep. You run and vote for a great slogan, mm -hmm. you turn around, you don't get a damn thing for it. Yeah, you understand? Yeah. So so now, women should turn on Gil Gillibrand's ass. <laughs> Right, because you was out front nationally calling Al Franken, and Al Franken said, "Yo, have an investigation. I'd rather do the investigation than you know. She ain't even want. They ain't even want that. You gotta go." And he did it. He did it. He resigned. Yeah. All right, but where is she now? Where is she now in New York? Mm, I I, I, I want to. Um, I told you. Okay, so I want to respectfully. <laughs> I want I want to respectfully but vigorously. Um, dissent with your view, Damon. I know for the that. Following reasons, the same charge 
of um, a political motivation that has been leveled at various political leaders over the question of allegations of sexual misconduct is the very same charge that has been leveled against Black Westchester and myself in particular oh, wow. for our very vocal stance against um, some of the wrongdoings in the Thomas administration. Mm. And I think that the focus and, you know, I, you know, as part, when I, when I wrote the piece that I wrote about Rich and, you know, the Civil War type of stuff in Mount Vernon, one of the things that I did was to do some research about um, court rulings with respect to the way, in, whether or not the political motivation of a, a critic in any way undercuts the legitimacy of of the charge that they make, mm. and most of the courts have um, ruled across the across the nation have ruled that it doesn't matter what the political motivation is. If I stand to gain by exposing your wrongdoing, that should not prevent me from raising an issue or the public taking it seriously because. It's possible that I'm going to gain at the same time the public gains by so having that's by like a bringing ma a matter of public safety. You're saying, well, public concern. Public it's concern. a public issue. Yeah. I mean, listen. I mean, public safety for the survivors. No, I'm not. No, accusers. no, I'm not even. I'm. I'm not talking about the survivor because you wouldn't necessarily. It's not necessarily like in the case of the charges that have been raised against the Thomas administration. There's no question. It's not even. It's not about, the charge isn't about sexual misconduct. Okay. It's about I, okay. some broader acts of criminality that have been claimed. Okay. And the rebuttal that's been offered thus far is mainly you guys, um, you know, are guilty of sour grapes. And, but know, but no, I can't. Fake See, news, I, I'm fake not news, gonna fake, fake oh, news, fake whoa. news. I'm not going to accept that because I got in every mayor's ass that I supported. See, M Richard Thomas wasn't no different. Then when I got Mayor but Davis, D, it's not. It's, no, no, it's no. not. It's not about no, whether no. you personally no. right. accept it. But it's, it's about no, no. whether or not. I'm not worried about. It's about whether or not we should discredit and table accusations that people make about the wrongdoing of political no, no, no. officials this is not because we say that they have Bob. something to gain. That there's Bob. a political motivation. It doesn't matter. Bob, you got it. I'm twisted. politically We're motivated not or not. No, you got it twisted. I'm not talking about accusations. I'm talking about. Actions. I'm talking about consistency. See, if you're going, if you're going to call this person wrong on it, then call the next person wrong on it. Be consistent in your actions. See, people can people can say, "Yo, Damon, you went after Richard Thomas." Well, I went after Mayor Davis. I went after Mayor Young, and I still and and, and I still got love for them. But if I disagreed with them, if they made a mistake in public. I corrected them in public. They made a mistake behind the doors. I corrected them behind the doors. It, it, it's consistency. That's what I'm saying because if Gillibrand is going to build this whole national movement to get Al Franken to step down over an accusation of what he did against a woman, violating a woman, she should be doing the same damn thing to Jeff Klein. I, I disagree. You same listen, way. Senator same Gillibrand way. is a national senator. I don't give a her shit. Interest, she in New York. Her interest is to maintain the legitimacy of the U.S. Senate. And therefore, every senator had an interest in making sure that any, oh, oh, any oh, oh, sitting oh, senator, hold on, hold any on. sitting senator who is accused of sexual misconduct and is allowed to remain in office without being charged and undermines the credibility of the let institution. Me ask you a and that's why she can raise the question about one me, of her oh, peers okay. and not the New York State Senate. But who the that's hell is on New wait, York wait, State wait, Senators wait minute, to do that? Wait a minute, but who is her constituency? She ain't running a national goddamn race. She get votes from here in Westchester County in New York. Hold in on. New York. Jesus. Hold on, let, let's, let's be clear. Let's be clear about something. Let's be clear about something. There's not been a goddamn Democrat who has spoken out against Richard Thomas. They're all hypocrites. Oh, not without and a doubt. Do I need to name any names? No, no. Look, we look. can start from the bottom to the top. Dude, every wait a single wait one a of them have remained wait silent. And on I top of that, I gave them my wait. support. Wait, Richard right, well, Thomas. I want to get back to them. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. We're sorry. Because we got a guest like, I have a well, my God. God. <laughs> you been scared. I have a you been, she's like, she's running for the door already. Like, <laughs> what the hell are they, you bring me into, Tasha? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be quiet, too, because we, we got to let y'all have. 
Why is it an S, Tasha, question? But, but, go right first, ahead. But Lorraine. I think y'all get the point. Go ahead, talking. Lorraine. Yeah. I have two questions. One, where's the investigation <laughs> at, and what did Andrea say about all this? Okay, oh, wow. You want to get right to the point. Absolutely. Okay. So, um, currently, the investigation is a non-start. Mm. We are trying to put pressure on at the grassroots level, and there are several grassroots organizations that are asking for an investigation. Actually, St Senator Stewart Cousins pre presented comprehensive sexual harassment reform in the Senate, and it can't get passed, surprisingly. Yeah, but what you got to say about Klein? Well, um, not much. I haven't heard anything publicly. About this, but a lot about the IDC. Mm -hmm. A lot about the IDC and the fact that she has presented comprehensive That's sexual right, harassment right. legislation in the Senate, and it should be passed. Okay. And part of that, um, part of that submission is the independent par uh, entity right. to investigate. Um, okay, I think that fly should go viral. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, Everyone, that's share the flyer, line. please. Mm. That that fly should go viral. Yeah. Because if the IDC is, is, is protecting a member, then that should go viral. Then they don't really care. The IDC right. should right. should have the integrity to say, right. to have an investigation for right. one of their members. Yeah, we and should hear more about himself. it. What does we, the IDC stand for again? Independent Democratic Conference. Okay. I right. don't care. I don't care. I, 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 <laughs> that's what, that's I don't what, care. That's what I, I kept saying. It's, I don't care, right? I don't care. That's yeah. what that's yeah. what those should stand for. Yeah. I don't I don't care about I think women's you're rights. Right, Damon. Well, like, to your point, AJ, we haven't heard that, you know, that much. It would be nice if we can hear a united front on due process. Well, like, we just want due process. All right, for people that's listening, right? That may be concerned, that may want to get involved. Mm -hmm. What can the listeners do? to assist you in achieving this goal? Um, there's a few things you want to start? Yeah, I mean, I would say, um, you know, getting in contact with us or, or, or reaching out to, you know, the senator um, and saying, hey, you know, like, what's going on with the investigation? I'm interested in learning more about it. We need to make a push for this to, uh, you know, you know, happen because, again, if you're getting the benefit of the doubt, like, you know, Erica also needs the benefit of the doubt, too. That's the young lady that came right. That's the accuser. Erica mm -hmm. uh, Vladimir, who uh, was a former staffer. Where she, she lives in, where she lives? She's probably in close proximity to the district. She got a lawyer? I think she, I think Can you she, find out the lawyer's name? Yeah, I can do that and get that back to the show. Yeah, she I can, can, we have the lawyer come on the show. Wonderful. That would be great. Yeah. No, because somebody's going to have to talk. Right. Yeah, I would say generally just get involved in the conversation mm -hmm. um, and make your voice be heard. Because, again, I was not present when the incident supposedly occurred, right? Right. None of us were. So I cannot speak to what happened on that night. What? So I don't know if he's guilty. I I mean, I, I don't know. All I know is that investigation has to move forward. And that's what we're advocating for. So I think it's really important that at the grassroots level, you know, women and, and men that really care about issues of gender equality and getting to the bottom of sexual misconduct and, you know, really um, empowering our institutions at the governmental level to address these issues, you know, with legislation like Andre Stewart Cousins has done, mm -hmm. I think that they should get involved in this conversation and help push it forward. Because what we're seeing now uh, nationally, there's a crisis going on nationally, and we're living in a very dangerous political climate, and it's really the grassroots that are leading yeah. the conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. In, in government right now and throughout the country. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we need to rely on the community. So, you know, so the community needs to come forward and uh, help us with this effort. There's a, I'm sorry. I just wanted to tell, say to listeners who are interested in getting more details that the Huffington Post did a very extensive article yeah. mm -hmm. on it a couple of weeks back, which mm -hmm. really provided some more detailed information mm -hmm. for yeah. me as a reader, and I'd, you know, I'd, I'd recommend people look for it as well. Yeah, if anyone wants to Google um, accusations against Senator Jeff Klein, you can find the story. If anyone wants to get in touch with us, they can do so through the People Before Politics radio show. Um, or um, NIPAN. You can go to NIPAN and message us, and we will get it. Is, um, there, is there a petition? 
started? There's not a petition, no. It's, but that it, sounds it, like a good idea. It Absolutely. Can, Online yeah. petition, yep. And Online to, petition. And to both of your points about the grassroots, Damon has really helped me further understand that we have given our power away. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, like we go to the polls and we vote, mm -hmm. but then we're not holding right. um, our representatives accountable. You know, and, and, and I thought I was pretty savvy until I really got to know <laughs> some of these things that are going on. And, it, like, I had no idea what was going on in Albany. Mm -hmm. You know, I had no idea how there's really rampant corruption. Somebody told me 33% of the assembly is appointed. I didn't know that. That's crazy. 33% is appointed. Yeah, because what happens is, is it's just strange. Like, people either um, age out. Or expire. Oh, so they appointed oh, so for, 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 right. for interim. Or spend some time in jail. Special circumstances. Right. I can't mm -hmm. say special elections necessarily. But um, but that's a problem. That's not democratic. Yeah, but that's but see, those are tricks. Because right. because if if this guy has been my aide, he's right. a little younger, right. right? And I I want him to see I want him to get my seat, right? I run for reelection, I get the new term. Mm -hmm. I I retire. Right. <laughs> they appoint him. Right. Right. He finishes out my term. Incumbency. Then he runs and say, reelect me. Exactly. You, you understand? And, and we don't and even we're, know. And we're like dummies. We just go, oh, we, we just <laughs> click the lever. <laughs> click, just click the lever. You know, it's we true. do it. And I mean, we foolish. We don't even research. We don't. Look, we at Mount, <laughs> Mount Vernon, <laughs> love her to death. I love mm -hmm. Deborah, Deborah Reynolds to death. But I never saw anyone that didn't go to a debate. A public speaking appearance. Didn't make one public speaking appearance. Right? And because she had the Democratic line, win. It, it's, it's nothing wrong with her. Right. Right? She it's did what she was supposed to do. Right. Democratic. She did what she was supposed to do right. to keep the position. Right. There's something wrong with the people. It's us. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something wrong with the people. And that's, again, mm -hmm. I love her to death. But when people just give their vote freely to other people, and, and and they don't even debate and yeah. they don't look at Cuomo. He was he, he ran from um Astorino and, and what what's the other the the other lady with the prim, the primary, the tall what what's her name? And for governor? Yeah, that, that primaried him for governor. Uh, uh is how, that for teach out? Right. I don't even oh, think he debated out. her. He didn't even you know, he didn't even I don't and even she think was he our she was our girl. She was the progressive girl. Right. Absolutely. I don't even think he debated her. But but see she that's is. what they do. You know that, and we, and then we continue to yeah. fall for these tricks. Yeah. You know, I, I really think like a mad scientist sat down and thought of how <laughs> to play mind games with people with these elections because because we fall for things that we, that that we shouldn't fall for. Yep. When when, right. when it comes for when it comes for elections. Yep. Yeah. You know, and we wonder why our communities and and our government. Right. Look at, Trump is a prime example. Exactly. Cuomo yeah. beat Astorino without a debate or an appearance or anything. He had one debate so far. He, so it, far was, it was it was in it was in only, Buffalo only on Buffalo radio. Canadian citizens knew more. Only Canada could watch. It was on, it was Ontario a, was ready to vote. It was on Buffalo radio. Like yeah. or public access or something where you almost had to be in Buffalo, <laughs> and it was like just before the election, and he ran from him the whole time. Yeah. and you know whether I like Astorino or not, Astorino wasn't fair. It was. I mean, he outspent him ten to one. Astorino, the number of votes he got still was impressive. Okay, be, because I mean he got outspent ten to one and never got a chance to debate or anything. Right, you know what I'm saying? He still got a a, a percent up his. Uh, you know. Yeah, it's 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 like amazing because we go to the polls. We might know the person locally. We might not if we go. And then once we you know flip the ballot or whatever, we just kind of like for the rest of the time we, we do this. And then we wonder you know why what? there's a raise in ta you, our taxes you, or you know you know and, and go just in Mount Vernon just in the last few elections, some of the reasons people put particularly picked candidates was disturbing. A lot of young females thought Richard Thomas looked good. A lot of your females thought Jamal Bailey looked good. I'm not saying that he didn't deserve to win or not. A lot of females, I never, and no disrespect at all to former mm -hmm. Senator Ruth Hassel Thompson, mm -hmm. but every female that ever told me that they supported Ruth Thompson, always the next thing out of their mouth was, that's my girl. Mm -hmm. it's I, I didn't hear nothing about... You know, mm -hmm. she did this, this, and this, and she mm -hmm. did. That's my girl. 
yeah. including the women whose house I rent from. They, they yeah. all of them. That's that was the number one thing that they said. It was just like nobody was talking about her record, or you know what I'm saying. Nobody yeah. was talking about Richard Thomas' record, or right. you know, you know what I'm saying. But you know I what they've Cuomo done. Was cute. <laughs> and that's why you're going to And his brother's even cuter. Oh, wow. You might listen. He might, he might get oh you the flip, God. huh? Right, right, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. We're going to give you a voter registration right, right. card. <laughs> now, now we need to check on the status. See Democrat in the next couple weeks. No, 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 no. That, that's a really important observation yeah. because, I mean, we went to event, an event last night and we heard Nina Turner speak to the crowd. Oh, you was there last night? What's that? You was there? Oh, you were there too at the event. Yeah. Oh, we didn't uh, cross paths. No. Yes, I was yeah, there too. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hi. <laughs> hi. Hello. Uh, so you know, she was at the event last night, and she was speaking truth to power. And her whole point consistently has been, we need to hold our elected officials accountable, whether That's they're right. Democrat, Republican, Green, Independent. Uh, absolutely. And we need to look at Working their families. records. We need to look at their legislative records and analyze that and determine if that is working for the best interest of our communities Absolutely. and base our vote on that. And she's very consistent in saying that uh, just because you're running on the Democratic ticket, you still, as a candidate, have to go out into your community and earn your community's vote. Absolutely. And this is what this conversation is about. It's about earning people's confidence, you know, their vote and their support. You can't just take voters for granted anymore, not in this day and age, because that's why we lost the presidency, um, you know, last year, uh, or 2016, because, you know, the, the Democratic candidate, Hillary Clinton, she was taking certain votes of the population for granted. So we can't do that yes, anymore. We was, cannot yeah. afford in this day and age to, you know, take voters for granted anymore. We and have to earn every vote. I just want to speak to women of color. I want to speak to black women and all women of color for a second. And y'all are going to have to just bear with me because this, I am so passionate about this. We vote against our own interest. Repeatedly. That's black people, period, but go ahead. But, 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 in, but I'm speaking to Spanish too. our yeah. sisters, okay? When you are considering the plight of a city like Mount Vernon, and you're gonna vote based on looks, or that's my girl, and not know the issues, those days are over. If we don't start looking at policy, and law, and issues, and how they affect us and our communities, and our futures, we will not, we, the income disparity in Westchester County and the nation is the biggest it's ever been. That's right. That's right. We are not getting ahead. It's, it's not your imagination that you're working so much and getting so little. That is real. And to continue to go in this way like any old blue, if they on the Democratic ticket, they must be good. Those days are over. Vote row A all the way. R row A all the way, all of that stuff. Identity politics because I know your brother or your, your, or your, your, you know, your sister or we went to the club. or No, no. Those days are over. And one thing that I do, I have criticism of the pro progressive movement. But one thing that I do like about the progressive movement is they're not afraid to say enough at the ballot and looking for candidates that aren't afraid to pick a side. So, like I said, I have my criticism, but we have to start looking at who we're voting for, and not only that, but holding them accountable to what our needs are. We need economic development. When we send people to Albany and to Washington, we want money back. We want jobs. That's right. We want safety. We want people of color in leadership. We are working hard. I did get out the vote. I did that. I knocked on doors. Some doors got slammed in my face, you know, the whole night. I did the phone banking. And I put somebody in office. And I'll continue to do it. But I want to see some people of color in your team. In leadership. And when women, those contracts, specifically. Women, when those contracts come out, they need to be some people of color getting them contracts. That's right. 
But no, we're not paying attention to that. So then our economy dwindles. Our income levels stagnate. People stay poor and get even more poor. And then there's the working poor. I can't even say there's really a middle class. It's like kind of like a working poor class. Mm. Because even if you're making 100000 and your bill's 130000 You're poor. You're broke. <laughs> you're broke. So I just yeah, broke. <laughs> just, so real quick again, one more time. Yeah. <laughs> and I finished my rant because she's one of my, I, I'm and so inspired by Nina Turner, president of our revolution, former state senator of the great state of Ohio. She said, okay, any blue, any old blue just won't do. That's right. Enough. Mm-hmm. What are you going to do when we put you there? Thank you. But it's also a lot of And it's also supporting candidates that um, show up for the community before they decide to run, right? And go go to the (laughs) local meetings and figure out what the issues are on the ground, what people are passionate about, what they're struggling with, right? Absolutely. Well, no, Uh, absolutely. That's important. Um, Because sometimes, you know, like people just start running for office without having those grassroots connection on the ground before they decide to run. And that's so critical because if you're running for office, you're going to represent a whole community you need to be the community's voice and ears um you need to find out what they care about so that you can fight for those issues and raise awareness and use your platform as an elected official as a leader in the community to raise awareness about issues and, and fight yep that's Absolutely. what that, that's what i did i was uh-huh. a community organizer before i ran and that's one of the reasons i i i, I won mm-hmm. was because I, I knew, knew every you. yeah and i knew all the issues right and we have to Black people, just because someone shows up at your church, mm. oh, that's just a, around that's election big time, big. yeah, you know, it's 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 one of the things. And and th- this this was said to, by a few preachers about Janice Duarte. What they liked about her, even when she wasn't running, she's you know for those two years she still More came by much. some of those churches and worshipped with the people. And both, um, I heard both um, Mount Calvary and Centennial pastors both say, I can't tell you who to vote for, but you look around to those people who can to worship with you when they're not running. Yes, and then they're exactly. out there, you know what I'm saying? Not just show up. You said those are the people that I vote for, the ones that come when show they're up not running. The election. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, they both they both mm-hmm. bigged her up for coming between the twenty fifteen and the twenty seventeen elections when she wasn't running. Yes. You know, just, just just using her as an example. You know, you don't yes. you know, everybody just just you know I mean, it doesn't matter who it is. I'm, when when Clinton was running and she to for whatever she came to Grace Baptist Church, um, just before the election, just to, just Grace Baptist well, we shook know, some hands. We know that she, you, you know, know, she came to the radio station and said she has hot sauce in her bag. I mean, we know <laughs> that. Oh she God! Wasn't, oh yeah, the whole, the whole hot sauce coming. That no. she wasn't in the communities, and then and then they were like, "Are you pandering us? What well, is it working?" Right, and, right. And she, she actually said that. And right, she still went to vote for her. But, but you know what? I was so Somebody mad. I was see, Not and me. this is and this is why I really like some of the things. I after that day, I never took Charlemagne serious because she wouldn't have came on this show and said that shit. She would have <laughs> got the hell up out of here with her bodyguards <laughs> and took her ass back on on the campaign trail. She would have not came. And and, and 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 took my suffering as a black man and talk about some hot sauce in the goddamn bag. Cause my mother is 83 years old. She never had hot sauce in a goddamn bag. I've never had and then that. if we ask you a question, if you're pandering, you ask me if it's working. I said, no, it's not. You have to leave. Goodbye. Have a good day. Thank you. Because, because I never took Charlemagne serious after that. And then you have the nerve to have Minister Farrakhan on. A couple of weeks before, and then you then you get totally disrespected because she's a presidential candidate. Absolutely not. I never I've never taken him serious after that, because I I, I, I I really he showed his negroism. Yeah. In sitting here and and sitting but with her that. because of because of who she is in her position. Yeah. No, bye, bye. But yeah. see, that's the difference to having independent radio, yes. and then and then having a, a radio that you have to pander to. The editors and right, things and like the, that, and the sponsors. And the I mean, sponsors. That, that Maybe that's why of, we don't get sponsors. I don't that's know. That's kind of. <laughs> <sick>. <laughs> 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 
The community is your sponsor. Right, right. Yeah. The community. That's, that's right. That's right. I, I didn't see the show, but Charlemagne's conduct, I think, is symptomatic of the entertain the sh- transition from from reportage to entertainment yes. in so many of our news programs. Yes. I'm not surprised because every time I see Charlemagne, he seems more concerned about making people laugh than yeah. really seriously grappling with the issues. And I know some Facebook, uh, I saw a Facebook post this past weekend where... Uh, he expressed surprise that a woman could be both black and Latina. You know, that was so time. ignorant. Oh right. Let me tell you. And, right, and, yeah. and I haven't had Brother time. Brother Jeff shared that with us. Yeah, I haven't had time to really sit down and make my little right. uh, Facebook video about that. Right. You but have that, three but, women of color right here that can right. speak to that. Yeah. I, oh, well, I we'll mean, speak to that. As, 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 I mean, I will. As a, I mean, as a I'll start. issue. I'll start. <laughs> I mean. There are Afro-Latinos in the world. Like, I am a Dominican and Puerto Rican, and yeah, I mean, I actually consider, I have curly hair, you know, I did my hair uh, yesterday and put some rollers on it, but (laughs) I have naturally curly hair, so as a Latino community, uh, you know, we need to get up to speed in terms of embracing our African heritage, Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, beyond the Latino community, you know, the rest of the community, the African-American community, um, the American community needs to realize that there is a very big Afro-Latino population um, because when the slaves were brought to the New World, they were brought to the Caribbean first mm-hmm. and right. South America. Columbus and, like, you know, all the coastal, the um, you know, the, the coastal regions of Latin America have a very large Afro-Latino population because, you know, that's where the slaves were brought. Right. So, I mean, we really need to come to terms with that. And there's an artist that's um, coming out right now. Her name is Amara La Negra. I don't know if you guys have heard of her. Mm-hmm. No. But, you know, she uh, came up in, in Miami, and she's trying to, like, break into the mainstream. And she's getting a lot of pushback from, you know, like, producers like Young Hollywood. And he's saying, oh, you're like... For you to be able to succeed in this business, that's, that's you have to get rid of your afro. Check it out. But that's her. That's her. That was that's who was on Charlemagne. That's a young lady on. And then on, yeah. you know she encountered Almost this certainly. producer, and he was saying, "Oh, like we need you to be more like Beyonce and less like Macy Gray, and you need to get rid of the afro because that doesn't look classy." And like, what are you African? Or are you Latina? Like, I don't understand. And he's Latino himself. Right. So there's a lot of ignorance in the Latino community, it's and there's a lot colorism. of colorism. There's it's colorism. colorism. Mm-hmm. There's prejudice. That's yeah. not really talked about because mm-hmm. we focus on oh, we're all Dominican or we're all Puerto Rican. No, but there's a lot of colorism um, and racism that exists in the Latino community that you know needs to be you know brought out yeah. and yeah. needs to be and addressed. We, and I'm glad that people like Amara are taking up that conversation and saying, hey, this oh, is an important is. issue. We need to stop and we need to recognize what this is and, and call it out. I, yeah, just wanna, I, just, I just have to take a break for a minute because I'm seeing something that I should not see on Facebook. Why is somebody going live at a funeral? Oh, oh. my goodness. People need attention. Why do I scroll down and see a casket and people going live at a funeral? Some things should not be on Facebook. That's right. Some things should be private. That's right. Bishop Collie Nathan Edwards. Wow. Why oh, 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 oh. why do you have <laughs> someone's funeral on Shot Facebook? Fired. Why? Why? It just is that something should not be put on social media. It's a private setting that if people wanted to see it, they would go. You know, I I you want people to see him perform. I don't understand. I'm, I, I really don't understand why is it, 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 it no. And you're supposed to be one of our. I, I said this before when you made the other comment. Right. Um, the problem we have with the situation is you put yourself out to be the moral police, but everything that goes on when there's an argument or a discussion. Oh, we shouldn't do that. We shouldn't be this way in public. We should work together. We should. You you put yourself as a moral compass. And then you do things like this. So 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 we're going right. to be harder on you than I, other people. I just people. had to say so that. Any, but but yeah, moving you know. on, we got we Wait, got comments. Can, we got comments oh, from do? Ken Bright, okay. who said, "Well, comment from earlier. Klein does nothing. He's a Republican thinker. He's a Republican." Nadine Hunt Robinson, the, the councilwoman from White Plains, said, "Yes, it's about getting to know it. It's about getting to know the people in the community. You cannot learn the issues with drive-bys." Talking about Ooh, what we were talking about. Good. And I like um, that one. Cynthia Turnquest Jones said, Great conversation. Um, Clive D. Hodges just said, 
you have Spanish people that are fair skinned, white, that look down on dark skinned Spanish people. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's that is true. true. Yeah. That is true. And that's true yeah. in yeah. Africa, that's true yeah. in Jamaica, yeah. that's true yeah. in America. I mean, yeah. that's just colorism yeah. all over right. the place. I mean, yeah. we got black, you know, black, I mean, that's just, so, you know. I wanted to just, Go ahead. please, if I could, I want to um, just shift back to the press conference because, mm -hmm. it, it, because it was mm -hmm. under the context of Me Too. Right. So I just want to talk a little bit about the Me Too movement, um, the in intersectionality that happens with women of color and yes. the Me Too movement and white women and the Me Too movement. It, that's um, a good question. Is there, yeah. is there, I'm, I'm seeing some tension going on <laughs> with the, with the Me Too move, mm. actual movement and where women of color actually fit yeah. in the Me Too movement. I'm so glad you brought that up. So we just came from a forum with Tarana Burke, who is the founder of Me Too. And she's been doing, she um, explained that she sounds like a social worker. Like when you hear her, she uses clinical terms. She uses like very familiar terms in the healing professions. Um, but she's been a social justice activist for 25 years. She, she um, self-describes as a survivor of sexual assault. And um, she said, you know, when she started this movement, Me Too, there were many women of color. Mm -hmm. this, was, this was our um, movement. And, um, she, and the question was asked, well, how did you feel when it went viral? You know, and she said, I was terrified. Because you got to understand for survivors, we, she, she never used the term victim, which I really like. Mm -hmm. For survivors of sexual assault, you are putting like your deepest, darkest moment out there for everyone now to have an opinion about. And she said she was terrified because now you have the World Wide Web, okay? And people are very bold and very cruel on their computers. She said some things that people said about her that were just like horrendous. And it got to the point where she had to stop looking at the comments. And then her friends who knew her work were like, girl, they trying to take your thing. When, <laughs> when, when it went viral and then Hollywood, no, and then Hollywood came and you know, did what they're doing, right? Mm -hmm. Because I heard about it from Alyssa Milano. I had no mm, idea, yes, 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 right? Yes, me, me too. too. <laughs> <laughs> right, me too. I had yeah. no idea that this yeah. was happening. And then on the internet, all of my friends, and not all of them, but a lot of my friends and a lot of my family were like, me too, me too. I was like, oh my gosh, it happened to so many women. Mm. And there's a spectrum, there's sexual harassment. She even has a program called Hey Shorty. Because there's a such thing as street harassment. Women get harassed on the trains daily. Daily, yeah. Daily. It's just, we just, you know, sometimes have been so, so silent about it because we haven't had a forum like this to say, we, this, this crosses race, this crosses socioeconomic, this crosses, unfortunately, age. So many children, one out of four girls, and one out of six boys <laughs> are experiencing sexual assault. And then, so, so, so I just want to say that some people are saying that now that Hollywood has it, you know, this is some kind of trying to put, you know, women of color out or why, where were they when we were here? And Tarana is saying, She's not taking that position. When it I'm went pleased viral, to hear that. Huh? I'm pleased to hear that. Yeah, she's not taking that position at all. She said when it went viral, she was terrified. But with that also came support. Mm -hmm. You know, with that also came, um, she said something in her heart when she kept saying, when she kept seeing so many hashtag me too's, something in her heart, like just, you know, got, got strengthened with how many women were now coming forward. So, so I think, uh, and she also spoke about, men said, well, can we say me too, too? And then some women were trying to exclude the men. I don't. She's not with that, we can't divide. Another thing Nina Turner said last night is we can't divide. We cannot 
continue to be in our silos of this is a my thing. And that came from Tarana Burke's mouth also. I mean, I'm, I wanted to make a couple of comments. Number one, I do want to point out to all our listeners that rules against sexual harassment are part of a much larger um, suite of le legal and legislative reforms that were enacted during the 1960s um, that cover a number of groups that have long been peripheralized here in U.S. society. And should we not rigorously enforce rules against sexual harassment at a time when there are um, revelations that this is far more widespread, there is also the possibility that um, there will be efforts to squelch, there's ongoing efforts that will only be strengthened to squelch other claims of, um, you know, unfair, unjust, unethical treatment. It's number one. Number two, I also want to say that we need to vigorously enforce those laws precisely because today one of the principal challenges that the nation faces is the decline of trust in our institutions. Mm -hmm. And the only way people are going to be motivated to participate is if they believe that their leadership is being held to the same standards as rank and file members in everyday life. Um, you know, to give an example, uh, oddly enough, I teach at Bronx Community College, and I can tell you that several years ago, a key figure, key male figure at the college was forced out after revelations that he had engaged in an inappropriate relationship with one of his subordinates. Um, and I am fully supportive of that. Um, I think it did a lot to undermine the trust of the staff and faculty of the college and his leadership, and to not have gotten rid of him, I think would have only further weakened the institution at a time when we're trying to find new innovative ways to, to serve you know, students. Um, so I just wanted to, to make that point, and, and you know, look, the reality is that you're right, there are men who have suffered from sexual harassment, and to not just sexual harassment, by assault. the way, sexual assault. assault. And probably men and, um, you know, men who have suffered yeah. from sexual assault mm -hmm. sh understand well the feelings of shame, embarrassment, yes. um, that will very often cause a, a woman to remain silent That's right. for years beyond Absolutely. what one would think is ordinarily um, you know, call for. Right. Um, there's a lot more to, to admit that one, the sanctity of one's physical being Absolutely. has been violated mm -hmm. is, is so, can be a source of immense shame that a person will have to struggle with for years. Yeah. And it's not only your, um, you know, you who's, you know, at stake here, oftentimes family members oh are broken yeah. up because very often it's our most intimate yeah. mm -hmm. um, friends Relationships. Yes, right. yeah. where, where this is happening. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to remind men especially of this because I think too often men are quick to dismiss, and, and women for that matter, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll add, um, quick to dismiss the slow-footedness of some um, survivors of right. sexual harassment right. and raise the mm -hmm. question, well, why did you wait so long? Right, right. And it may be that it took me that long to recover from the trauma. Absolutely. And to or gain the strength. Or even to process it, right? Yes. And yeah. recognize it, you know, as a severe violation of your personal boundaries. Right. Uh, I, um, I, one of the things that uh, Tarana Brooke was talking about today that I really liked, she focused on community healing circles and the importance of empowering survivors to get the skills that they need to process mm -hmm. uh, you know, these traumas and the importance of educating other survivors so that they can replicate different healing circles in the community. Our communities, mm -hmm. our communities need to heal. Mm -hmm. um, and that was something that she talked extensively about today. Um, yeah, I mean, like, um, I have so many things to say, but I'm gonna try to be succinct. Um, when you experience a violation, we live, first of all, we live in a patriarchal society and a misogynistic society. And sometimes that's internalized, right? Mm -hmm. So when you experience a violation, 
there is this negotiation within yourself. Did I do something to deserve that? Sure. Mm -hmm. Did that really just happen? Am I making too much of this? Maybe it was how I, how I was dressed. You know, um, and and I've had conversations like this with men, um, in regards to if a a woman who's in a teaching profession say, mm -hmm. is like dressed with a form fitted dress, a form fitting dress, sh is that appropriate? Should she do that? Mm -hmm. And um, my thing is like people should be able to wear what they want, mm -hmm. but um, sometimes I get you know a comment. Well, you know then people are gonna want to effort. And you know the way I look at that is we need to start teaching our boys and girls that that's not she's not she is not your object to violate because you are now aroused or whatever. Girls are taught. Keep a quarter between your legs. Keep your, keep your legs closed. What are boys taught? That everybody's free range? Woo. If, 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 if you... <laughs> That's really, no, and I don't mean to make light you of it. You know what I, I mean? Very so, so they even talked about in the, in the institutions mm. that are mm. public. Where's sex education? We don't even have sex ed in, in the schools anymore. No, you know, we don't. What's a good touch? That's, what's a bad right. touch? You know, how come we're not teaching our children mm -hmm. how to be, you know... Um, accommodating of one another's safety and and one another's right to their own personal bodies. And one of the things she was I, saying is that in terms of sex education, we should bring it like way back to like pre-K. I think she was little, saying. little, little boys and girls like as young as five, six years old, because you know they can absorb these concepts at an early age. And they'll grow up into being socially responsible adults that respect other people's boundaries. So she was saying that, like, we need to, you know, empower them with sex education, you know, as early as preschool. And I think that makes a lot of sense. It's like learning sec a second language, a third language. Like, I it's always better to teach the youth at an early age. And the same thing with these concepts. I went to a birthday party with my granddaughter, toddlers, mm -hmm. like a three, two, up to three, one to three. And um, it was so funny because I saw a young father in his 20s and his son, um, I think he was like going up and the little girl maybe like backed up or whatever. And he made a joke, but he said, listen, no means no. Mm -hmm. No means no. And I was so impressed with this young father, <laughs> you know, because sometimes the message is, oh, if he touches you, he likes you, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. That's how that's how we grew up. Oh, you know, well then he likes you. He pulled your hair. Oh, he likes you. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I I just want to summarize that you know the messaging um, started young, and everybody has the right to their own body safety, regardless of gender, and we mm -hmm. could start having better experiences, and then men will stick up more when they see you know. Hey, shorty, my first experience with sexual harassment on the street was at 12. Mm. And it was a group of grown men. Grown men are nasty. <laughs> right. Them old ass men sitting on the corner are nasty. <laughs> right. I mean, it, it, Nobody I mean we joke about it. Nobody within that circle checked you know, right, right, we, we, right, right. We joke about it, but it is, you know, and they think it's cute, you know. <laughs> Yeah, no, you're yeah, absolutely and right. An another phenomenon I found, and I know one or two females I know personally have been um, sexually assaulted by their stepfathers. Yeah, we, yeah. And one specific, yeah, one mm. specifically, it was her mother's husband, and when she told her mother, she didn't her believe. mother didn't believe her and thought that mm. she was trying to break them up. Yes. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? And it's like, I, I, as an adult, this young lady, the scars, you know, oh, yeah. that she's had has made it very hard for her to have relationships, like mm -hmm. real relationships. And I see a lot of that, you know, a lot of, you know, when she was speaking, I've seen a lot of other women came mm -hmm. that that's happened a lot. And, you know, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. That's the, that's the, like, you know, she didn't even movement. question it. She just was like, no, no, it's not you, true. You, you're, you're, you gotta be making that up. Like, mm -hmm you're putting some man before your daughter. You're yeah. like, you know, regardless who he is. I mean, yeah, I mean, to me, this moment is really about taking that power back mm -hmm. and just saying to people, hey, this is a safe space where you can feel free to come forward when you're ready. 
Mm -hmm. um, and there's go and when you're ready, there's going to be a community of people that will hear you mm -hmm. and try to give you the support system that you need to process whatever's going on. And we can connect you to other survivors. It's all about sharing stories, experiences, and empowering people to valid to validate. Um, to well, actually, to not let other people discredit your own lived experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's a really powerful moment. Um, and the power of community healing circles, what Tarana Burke was talking mm -hmm. about today, cannot be understated, cannot be overstated enough because there's um, a, there's lack of health services in our community, and specifically mental health services. Mm -hmm. So it's really up to the community and the grassroots to step up and be like, hey, you know, we need to come together and figure this thing out. Like, come up with a healing circle. Um, so that you know, we can empower young girls and, and young boys and men, women to have these conversations in a safe space. We were surrounded by men at that press conference. We had mm -hmm. so much support from men. That's good. You know, and thank you to all the men that provide safe spaces mm -hmm. for girls and women. Mm -hmm. And thank you to all the, the women who provide safe, safe spaces for girls and women. And thank you to everyone who provides it for boys and men. Thank you. You know, everyone's not being, uh, uh, um, um, what is it, um, an offender. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everyone's not doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, so we, so I just, um, th today was so healing in a way because it, it's hard. And one thing she did do, which I commend, she had mental health trauma therapists in the room. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. were telling some, really? you know, mm -hmm. real. I mean, it was real in there, you know. Um, so I commend her for that. I hope we can do more of that in Westchester. The, the, the community of silence needs to end. That's what this Me Too movement is doing. People are starting to say, oh, well, I could say it. Because, again, you question whether it even was that date rape. You question. Mm -hmm. You question. Did that, what, did, did maybe I did, 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 when when it's your parent, yes. when it's when it's your step parent, and you're supposed to be able to trust your your religious person, teacher, your teacher, bus driver, yeah. counselor, and you know your people neighbor. that we trust our kids with. Right. There's a um there's a comment from Craig D. Hodges. He said, "This is a different day and age. You cannot do what your parents did as kids growing up." Mm -hmm. Right. And right. this is all about restorative justice for our communities because we people go through a traumatic experience like that that carry it for life. And like we what we've been talking about this whole time is that it impacts the relationships that they have mm -hmm. with friends and family, you know, you know, future mm -hmm. like people that they encounter mm -hmm. which ends up turning into violence in our communities because mm -hmm. people don't know how to deal with those traumas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these conversations are so important for them to take place because it helps people take ownership and figure out that they're not alone, that mm -hmm. there's someone that they can turn to, which, you know, getting back to the concept of healing is critical because that's what we need in our community, restored justice um, that comes with community healing. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I, 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 we're coming kind of close to the end of the show, so mm -hmm. before I want um, any body want to reach out to your organizations oh, yes. can find out more about your organizations yeah. any websites social media that you yeah. want to share mm -hmm. that kind of stuff I want to get that in sure um, uh, Bronx progressives you can uh, find us on Facebook um, we meet every month our general membership meetings uh, usually take place on a weekend and we you know mm -hmm. invite people to come through and, and participate we deal with a whole host of local issues whether it's housing um, and generally involving people in uh, the electoral process so that they could be empowered right. to participate Wonderful. in the political process and register people to vote and things like that. So if you live in the Bronx, um, please join our organization. We're always looking to get new recruits so that we can keep the membership growing, uh, growing strong. So that would be Bronx Progressives at, in Facebook? Yes. And um, Love Pan has a page on Facebook. Love is spelled eight L H V P A N. Is Lower Hudson Valley Progressive Action Network. So we have a page on Facebook. You can message us. You can. We welcome you to join us. We are a Westchester and Putnam County based organization, and we welcome members. We have um, quarterly meetings, 
And um, we welcome members, so you guys can reach out to us there. NIPAN is the state chapter. We have 31 chapters throughout the state. So when we put our um, efforts behind a candidate, especially at the state level, we expect some results because mm -hmm. we're, we're grassroots and we get boots to the ground for getting out the vote. And that's N-Y-P-A-N. Now, um, we talked a lot about politicians and um, po politics and stuff. There's, um, you're also involved with the Westchester Black Political Conference. So excited, yes. Um, um, speak about that a little bit, what that is. and what the Yes, what so I'm so excited to be um, one of the founding members of this first ever um, Westchester Black Political Convention. And our role, along with Damon and Kenneth and Dr. Bob, we are looking to empower our community of color in the Westchester County mm -hmm. um, because candidates run for office and they need money to be able to do that. Yeah. And far too often communities of color can get out the vote, but we don't have the same financial contributions that other communities have. So we deliver votes, but but the candidate is not always coming back to our communities to do actual reform. So this convention is in place to do a few things, to educate communities about what's going on, to advocate for community members, and to endorse candidates, and to hopefully run some candidates and, and you know get some people from the community who don't know how to do this thing and teach them how to do it mm -hmm. with our backing because we know that they have the same interest in community development that we do. So our thing is community development, education reform, criminal justice reform, oh my gosh. Criminal justice reform and education reform, if we don't get this thing together, <laughs> we have got to have major reform, mm -hmm. major reform. Um, and, and you know, we just want a better Westchester for more Westchester residents. Westchester is pretty well segregated by, um, uh, location and also segregated by by income. Mm -hmm. I, I, I wonder. I want to go backwards a little bit. We were talking about um, men ogling women and oh, about yes. how they dress and stuff. Mm -hmm. As a father of a daughter and two stepdaughters, mm -hmm. um, I think as as parents, it's also regardless of what's right and wrong and fair and mm -hmm. how things look, we also must be honest with our daughters, yeah. like. I remember my mother had to at first my mother had the conversation with my sister. She was like, you know, my sister might want to wear something that's a little shorter, yeah. stuff like. And she said, "You can wear that, but if you do, you have to be ready for some of the attention mm -hmm. that may, whether it's right or wrong, that you may get. Right. And you need to be aware of that when you put that on. Right. You know, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And I understand it's not fair, and women should be able to wear what they want to wear." Mm -hmm. But we do understand in the real world there's a lot of sick people out there. Y yeah. You understand what I'm saying? And, yeah. we need, and we need to be real with them on that level as well. Not make them feel yeah. guilty or anything, but I'm no, just saying. No, 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 I understand but what you're be, saying. And, and I think that's important. And uh, again, as a father of a daughter and two stepdaughters, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know. I agree I, I, with you. I agree with you. And I just want to add to it. Mm -hmm. If we do that, we need to teach our sons. I've, absolutely. Absolutely. We also need to teach our Respect. sons that's that, that yeah. Yeah. yeah, it has to be Good. equal because you know because we're in a patriarchal, mm -hmm. patriarchal, patriarchal mm -hmm. environment, you, we are putting the responsibility for mm -hmm. safety on the women only. No, and I agree. I agree with the. I, I specifically have a daughter and two stepdaughters. And I, I have you a daughter. But my but my mother also told me about certain things that I. You know what I'm saying about mm -hmm. how to handle certain things and yeah. how I need to be conducting myself certain ways. Um, Can we had a couple of comments. Nadine Robinson said, "Keep it real, AJ." Clive D. Hodges said, "Also, the black community as it's looked upon that if you don't talk, oh, that you don't oh, talk about your so personal true. problems, Absolutely. and that must change." That is so true. And then he said, "Criminal justice slash mm -hmm. start with Rockefeller laws." That's what he Which are eliminated. Yeah. Um, but we, we are looking for some money to come back into the community mm -hmm. because of the effect that devastated communities of color. Um, but, but if I could just mm -hmm. go back to that point. Um, 
yes, our mothers and grandmothers taught us a lot of things. Mm -hmm. They did. And it was to keep us safe. And and I, I am not disagreeing because I believe in modesty, mm -hmm. right? But I am not going to criminalize a no, woman. No, not at all. Yeah. A woman who doesn't by putting her safety completely on her. It is it is my hope that we can evolve as a community and put safety expectation on everyone. Right. Because because what what we run the risk of doing is making it her fault. Right. If this happens and we need to get away from that. We need to say it is the fault of the offender. Oh, absolutely. You can't go back and tell her told you so right the, the, well another thing and also um as far as safety one of the things that i often told my daughter my mother told my sister you know you, you keep a 20 dollar in your in your wallet somewhere you know what i'm saying this yeah. way you always have a way home mm -hmm. you, you know what i'm saying like you don't no matter what the situation is you can always find a way home without having to depend on somebody for a ride which is what sometimes puts our our, our youth in trouble regardless you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not have it have to depend on someone else, and that's I, man I or female. I want to take back. I want to let you talk, but I want to get to oh. I just want to say I consider myself to be a paragon of virtue. I think I'm an exceptionally virtuous man. I think that to be a good person is very important for me, and I it's something I recommend for all of the men. Honesty is part of that, and I have to admit that I've never ever took license with a woman. But I surely have looked at a woman. I think that is natural. Okay. That's natural. That's natural. That's, I mean, we, and, and the question natural. becomes, what, as a man, what do you do with those desires? Right, right. And Absolutely. And what right. is the appropriate condition yeah, of, of course. To, to express that to yeah. a woman? And I don't think, you know, just me personally, I've always, in my conversation with my male friends, I always told them, I feel uncomfortable. If I see a strange woman and she's attractive, I'm not running up on you and, like, how, you know, it's, that's a subtle dance, and it, requ it requires something a little bit more than just being bold and really disregarding social norms and say there's only, you know, you, there's a certain kind of trust between people before mm -hmm. that can be said. And I always, because I do teach, and I, I say to my male students, I think the closest thing that straight men can, I I the equivalent experience for them, and I'm going to say this for everyone to hear, is if a gay man looks at you mm -hmm. and begins to sexualize you and objectify you, mm -hmm. only then do you understand the level of violation. Yeah, you right. feel really like naked at that point, right? You do. And I want to no, remind no, 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 you. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but, 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 but I do understand. I, I, it never happened to me, but I do. No, I'm not even saying it happened to me, I but even when we get it. I, I get, when I get we it. walk around, we know I, guys I we may suspect point. rather I get the point. We go through that pretty yeah. much on a regular But I, I want to add I want to add also that this movement is also to empower men like yourselves who have daughters, right? So that you can put peer pressure on other men in your community to say, "Hey, because it should it, the only shouldn't be on the woman." Like what Tasha is saying, like we need to empower men in our communities to stand up and, and speak out. But and, that's and what we see. That's stand my point. Stand up and speak out that's against my point. people violating other people's boundaries. So it's like, hey, you know, like what you did. Yeah, you're my friend. You're my buddy. But I saw how you approached that young lady or that woman or, or that boy, and it wasn't the right thing to do and just say, hey, you know, this is how maybe you should approach it. Maybe like how you should rethink. Um, Absolutely. Coming, like if you're in a future situation like that. And like it's really men calling out other men for their behavior. No, well, putting it's in really a system of peer nice pressure. Special it's special really nice men too. being men. Absolutely. See, see, see what's, 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 what's missing is the understanding um, that men – if men are acting men, and and I say this, I say this on Instagram, and and you know I, I put little sayings out that you know we need. I, where are the real black men to stand up for mm -hmm. the community? Yeah. See, because because people will act a certain way when they know that the community of men have rules and regulations on how you're going to act. You're not right. going to disrespect mm -hmm. our woman on the corner. Mm -hmm. You're not going to dis. You're not going to do things to our children. Mm -hmm. 
there there is a code of conduct mm-hmm. that you should act as being a grown ass man. Right. But but there but see but men are not like you said we're not calling out men and we're not even showing them examples because you got a lot of grown ass men that want to be kids. Right. right. They're just tall boys. Boys over the age of twenty one. And you right. don't get to Absolutely. treat the woman Absolutely. who is the you know from her neck to her 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 ankles covered different from the woman who has a mini skirt. You don't get Absolutely. to do that. Absolutely. And with that we come to the close of the show. <laughs> yeah. um, we thank everybody for listening. This is a topic that can be discussed a lot longer. Um, look out for the new issue, the black history issue. Um, you could be doing anything else right now, but you decide to ride with us, and we greatly appreciate it. This has been Black Westchester Presents, the People Before Politics radio show, every Sunday, 6 to 8, on InTheMixRadio.com. Until next week, um, when we'll have Senator, um, I mean, um, Shelly Myers assembly, on. Assemblywoman Shelly Myers on. Candidate for Senate. Uh, yes. Eight, uh, peace. 22 million black victims of Americanism are waking up. And they're gaining a new political consciousness. Becoming politically mature. And as they become, uh, develop this political maturity, they're able to see the recent trends in these uh, political elections. The any minority that has a block of votes that stick together is in a strategic position. determine who go to the White House and who stay in the doghouse. You're the one who has that power. You, you and I have never seen democracy. All we've seen is hypocrisy. When we open our eyes today and look around America, we see America not through the eyes of someone who has, who has enjoyed the fruits of Americanism. We see America through the eyes of someone who has been the victim of Americanism. We don't see any American dream. We've experienced only the American nightmare. We haven't benefited from America's democracy. We've only suffered from America's hypocrisy. And the generation that's coming up now can see it and are not afraid to say it. And I'm 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 not afraid to say it.